In this lesson, an overview of pharmacovigilance activities will be presented. Why is post-market drug safety important? Drugs have brought enormous benefits, but no drug is 100% safe for all people in all situations. When a new drug is being developed, it goes through several phases of examination, including non-clinical studies and clinical trials to assess its safety and efficacy profile. Clinical trials have limitations, known as the five twos. The first is too few. Usually, a few thousand patients are involved in clinical trials. This means around 0.1% of AEs may be detected. But after approval, the number increases rapidly. The second is too simple. A simple protocol that removes uncertainty for proving the efficacy such as concomitant treatment. After approval, patients with various backgrounds take the drug. The third is too median age. There are situations, such as patients over 75 years old, are not included in clinical trials. Moreover, even in specified clinical trials like pediatric clinical trials, too many younger subjects may be difficult to be enrolled in the clinical trials. However, the approved drugs may be used with those patients. The fourth is too narrow. In clinical trials, all factors, such as the administration timing of drugs, testing schedule, and monitoring are controlled under protocols and specialists. The last is too brief. The term of clinical trials is usually decided from the point of efficacy. The duration of long-term safety clinical trials is usually one year. But for chronic diseases, drugs are used for more than one year. However, once the drug is approved and goes into the post-marketing phase, the limits of the five twos no longer exist, and unforeseen adverse drug reactions can emerge in a larger scale of drug usage. This is the reason why post-market drug safety is important. To secure post-marketing drug safety, the risk of the drug is managed by the RMP, which is finalized by the end of the drug review. The RMP document is composed of safety specification pharmacovigilance plan, and risk minimization plan. In this lesson, you will learn about pharmacovigilance activities. This figure shows the time frame of the pharmacovigilance events in Japan. At the time of approval, re-examination periods will be specified as 4 to 10 years, typically 8 years for new molecular entities. During this period, drug safety information is collected as pharmacovigilance activities, which are specified in the RMP. As routine pharmacovigilance activities, there are spontaneous reports and periodic benefit-risk evaluation reports. In Japan, Pharmaceutical companies and healthcare professionals are obligated to provide spontaneous reports to PMDA. This reporting is required throughout a drug's life cycle based on good vigilance practice and ministerial ordinances. PMDA evaluates and analyzes the information and judges whether safety measures should be taken. The second method of routine pharmacovigilance activity is the periodic reporting system. During the re-examination period, a company is required to review safety information and report the results as periodic safety reports, 
every six months for the first two years after approval and annually thereafter. This system is utilized for reporting and evaluating aggregated data. Aggregated data is the consolidation of data relating to patients with various backgrounds, which helps to determine the safety profile of a drug from multifaceted viewpoints. One of the additional pharmacovigilance activities is EPPV. EPPV is started from immediately after the approval and ended six months later. Another additional pharmacovigilance activity is the post-marketing drug survey. MAH is required to collect safety and efficiency information in practical use at an early post-market phase and evaluate benefit-risk balance during the re-examination period. PMDA assesses the benefit and risk based on the results of the survey and MAH's evaluation at the re-examination. EPPV is one of the key elements as an additional pharmacovigilance activity in Japan and is also a risk minimization activity from the aspect of providing information for proper use. EPPV is implemented under the GVP. Drugs with new active ingredients, new indications, new routes of administration are basically the targets of EPPV. But when the safety profile of a drug is similar to a currently approved drug, EPPV may not be required. Additional pharmacovigilance activity includes post-marketing surveys. Drug use investigation is most common in the post-marketing drug survey, but surveys utilizing real-world data are increasing recently. These activities are implemented under Good Post-Marketing Surveillance Practice, or GPSP. Through pharmacovigilance activities, various kinds of safety information are provided to PMDA. This slide shows the flow of safety assessment and labeling revisions in Japan. PMDA receives various types of reports like spontaneous reports, scientific papers, reports on overseas regulatory actions. Serious and unknown ADR reports are evaluated immediately and safety actions taken by overseas regulatory authorities are reviewed promptly. Study reports are evaluated as well. All of the ADR reports are imported into the PMDA Individual Case Safety Report, ICSR, database and used for signal detection and safety evaluation. When it is necessary to communicate urgent and serious information, a letter of emergent safety communications called the yellow letter or the letter of rapid safety communication, called the blue letter, are disseminated. About 200 labeling revisions are implemented every year. In the details of the assessment of the reports, PMDA reviews all of them and, in particular, spontaneous reports every day. If an adverse reaction is suspected to be attributable to the drug, PMDA collects more data to decide the necessity of further review. PMDA call these steps the first screening and the second screening. If the second screening finds a case potentially requiring examination of safety measure actions, PMDA will send inquiries to the relevant company to ask for their opinion on the necessity of the safety measures. Where necessary, PMDA we will have an interview. Then PMDA will examine the necessity, taking account of the company's opinion. If a case is found to be the one that needs to be urgently and promptly addressed, a yellow letter or blue letter will be issued. If a case does not need the safety measure actions at the time, the case is recorded with a notice flag 
and will be screened from the first screening when the next report comes. When the actions are considered necessary, PMDA will also examine the necessity of an expert discussion and of issuance of notification of direction for revision of the precautions for use section. If the examination indicates that the actions are necessary, the case will be subjected to an expert discussion and PMDA will develop an action plan within one week after the date of the expert discussion in principle and submit the investigation results to the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare. A minor revision of the package insert, if appropriate, may be directly implemented without an expert discussion. Then, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare will issue a notification about the action. A regular notification of direction for revision of package insert is issued every five weeks. In summary, this video explained routine and additional pharmacovigilance activities in the RMP and how PMDA assesses those various sources of safety information. PMDA also examines the necessity of safety measures, such as revision of package inserts, within a short period.